So guys, we're here at the Camper Clinic open house in Rockport, Texas. Beautiful day, mid 60s, just absolutely gorgeous out. They got a lot of stuff going on over there, feeding everybody, playing music for them. We're gonna kick this off by taking a look at this Grand Design Solitude fifth wheel. So hang tight, I'll be right back. So this is the Grand Design Solitude ST380 FLR. This is a beast. I've done similar videos on competing brands versions of this floor plan. It's a very popular floor plan. And one of the things I can tell right off the bat is that it's gonna have the storage underneath the back section here. This is simply a huge fifth wheel. As you walk up closer to it, you can just kind of see how large it is. This slide is a rack and pinion slide. That is a Schwintech slide. Underneath, you'll see that it has a 12 inch I-beam frame as well as a 10 inch I-beam drop section. So this is kind of unique and Grand Design does talk about the fact that they use a 10 inch I-beam for the drop frame section. I do love the fact that they employ either Schwintech or rack and pinion slides all the way around. You can see the hydraulic leveling system, six point leveling system. As we come around, down here you can see that this has the LCI, it's the Equal Flex Suspension Equalizer. 16 inch wheels, has Westlake G rated tires though. So they're giving you a pretty robust tire on this unit. And quite frankly, I'm glad that they're starting to put G rated tires, even though it is a Westlake, which is a relatively, you know, off brand, they are pretty much all built from the same factory and they're putting a slightly more robust tire, which is going to give you more peace of mind going down the road. I really haven't heard a lot of complaints about these Westlake all steel G rated tires. I've heard about them on their lower rated tires, but these seem to be performing really well. The only upgrade I would like to see on this unit is one that's kind of common sense, and it's to add the heavy-duty shackle straps, because I do not see them on here, or greasable wet bolts. Aside from that, though, it's a pretty good setup. Taking a look at the storage area here, I like the fact that they use the thicker baggage doors. This is that storage compartment that I was telling you all about. It's becoming... Very common with manufacturers to make this floor plan. It's basically an elevated floor plan where they give you a tremendous amount of storage back here. One thing that's kind of interesting to note is that drop frames are designed to give you a lot of extra storage up front. But do you really need a drop frame and would it make more sense to have a solid frame going across if you have this much storage in the back? So just something to think about. Now moving to the back storage compartment, You'll see all the aluminum framework here. Now I know when I did the review on the Van Lee, they finished all this off, so this was essentially its own storage area. But I kind of like the fact that it's open. I like the ability to put longer items maybe across this as well. To me, it's kind of a functionality thing. And even though it's not as finished off appearance-wise, I think it's a little bit more functional because it is left open. Overall though, tremendous amount of storage. Let's take a look at the back. Here's another observation that I like. I know a lot of fifth wheel manufacturers, especially your higher end ones, like to use the little gas struts to lift everything up. The problem with gas struts is that it only lifts the door up to about here, which means you're still ducking down to get into a storage area. And they do it because it's a little bit higher end. You know, you just simply pop your slam latches and the thing opens up on its own. But I like the magnetic holds better because it holds the door completely open. I can walk right up to it to get into it. This is a huge storage space. This is great if you have maybe e-bikes, maybe a small motorcycle, you know, a four-wheeler, something small that you can fit into this opening, which is about three feet, three and a half feet tall. I love the fact that you can pull this entire tray out and give you access to whatever cargo you have without having to bend over. But this is just a really cool setup. And this is definitely something that I would like to see on some other floor plan styles, perhaps maybe even a mid bunk. What you have to be careful of though is that 
this entire section is behind your axles, which means if you overload the section and you're not paying attention to how much stuff you're putting back here, you can really make for an unstable towing situation simply because of the amount of weight you're transferring behind your axles. So that is something to keep in mind. Not as big of a concern if you're using a fifth wheel versus like a bumper pull. However, it is something you do need to pay attention to because you don't want to remove too much weight off the pin of a fifth wheel either. And that back door is also one of the thicker doors. Coming around to the other side, you'll see you have two more access hatches to get into that storage area. This slide is on a Schwintec slide system. Down here, this is going to be on a rack and pinion system. Moving around, another slide on a Schwintec slide system. Let's take a look at your wet bay. So, as you can clearly see, you do sacrifice some storage space up here with this design. You do have access to some storage space here to the side, but for the most part, it is not going to be extremely useful except for maybe things like a cord, even though there is a cord reel on this unit. I do like the fact that they make their water control panel very clean and organized. They use good components, and it comes across very nice. It doesn't look sloppy. It doesn't look like it was second thought. This is the back of your hot water heater furnace as well as your propane cans up front. This unit has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,800 pounds, 2,036 pound cargo capacity. I would recommend a dually truck to tow this. It is a full profile unit which means that it's going to be tall up front and it's going to maintain that height all the way to the back which means it's a big wall and if it's windy you want as much stability as possible. They have the Trail Air LCI Rotaflex pin box on this unit. Basically, this swivels. It has a big rubber bushing right here to kind of absorb any of that flex as you're towing it. And again, these are part of your level up hydraulic landing gear system. Three year warranty. I like how they put this here. Sounds solid, fully laminated walls. That is true. So again, this is the ST380FL-R. Let's take a look inside. It is keyed alike, which is really nice. So this is a front living room floor plan. One thing I would like to see is a friction hinge door. This door just kind of swings, and it's not even that windy outside, so if you're on any kind of an incline, the door is going to swing on you. Going up the stairs to the front living room area has a very nice front living room. Both of these love seats fold out into a bed, so you have this huge bed across the front of it. Nice cabinetry work. I like the trim work. Very nice. Does not have a quiet cool or whisper quiet air conditioning system. Has the Mach 3, which is still a relatively quiet unit, though. So they, instead of putting a whisper quiet system in, went with a slightly more efficient system that does not have the quiet cool duct work. So... You have your theater seating here. They put these nice little end tables that plug into the armrests. These are power recline. Coming down into the kitchen area, you can see you have a nice island here with some countertop and cabinet space. Nice residential full-size Samsung refrigerator. Microwave, as well as a really nice cooktop area. Very residential feeling. You have your pantry right here. And over here, you're going to have a half bath. They give you about a foot and a half of space in front of the toilet. If you're really tall, it might be a little bit difficult, but they give you a tremendous amount of ceiling height in here. Just in general, the ceiling height in this unit is really nice. And again, that's mainly because it's a full profile unit. You step up to the overhang right here, and back you step up to that storage area that's underneath. Very nice kitchen dinette area. Huge windows. And the window valances look very nice and well finished off also. This is one area that Grand Design does very well. They make sure that the cabinetry and the parts inside, what you see, is very well put together and inspected for any type of imperfections before it leaves the factory. Okay, so stepping up to the bedroom, you can see it has a king-size bed. Good amount of space on each side as well, so you're not going to have much of an issue getting around the bed. Actually, they gave you quite a bit of space. Have some nice windows to the side and on top. I know manufacturers are looking to do this more. I'm not a huge fan of putting 
all these windows around the bed. I can understand the side ones, but most of the time I want it dark when I sleep. Here's the other side. You have a very nice dresser here at the end. Lots of storage space. It does have room for a stackable washer and dryer or a combo unit, whichever one you prefer. Nice one-piece shower assembly. And in here you have pretty good height, so you're probably going to be capped off at a 6-7 if you're standing in the shower. Dual vanity sink area here. You have two nice sinks here, plus some more storage space over here, countertop space, lots of cabinetry, and a huge mirror, and a nice window on the side. Overall, this is a really nice floor plan. It's definitely more couples designed. I mean, the bathroom and everything is set up for that. Of course, you can have people that stay up front here with you, which is also really nice. And you have a nice bathroom here, or at least a half bath to entertain guests. One thing that they've done that is really nice, and I think a lot of other manufacturers should do it to separate space, they put a curtain here. And you can close this curtain if you have guests with you and you want to treat this as another bedroom. Or let's say you have something going on in here that's separate from this space, you have the ability to close this off, isolate this spot, and again, have essentially a little bit more isolation there. And that runs across this entire section right here. So it really isolates that off, but I like that. Taking a look at the price, this has an MSRP of $101,000. Their asking price on it is $89,986. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be out here looking at more units. If you haven't had a chance, now is a great time to subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.